بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعصهما فإنه قد غوى وإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون <تصفيق> We begin with the thanks and the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to him, Alhamdulillah. And we should always be thanking and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any state that he has put us in. So today, we all need to say Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> I'm probably going to be doing that a lot. My throat's a little messed up. So if I start coughing or anything, please forgive me. But again, we say Alhamdulillah. And I don't know if I'm from Orlando, Florida, so we have SeaWorld there. So there's this thing called like a splash zone. So the people that want to get into the splash zone, inshallah, they'll get the most reward. So inshallah, try to come forward closer because there's mercy up here and you might get a little bit of <coughs> water in your faces as well. <clears throat> inshallah. Inshallah not. Okay. So again, we say and we begin with Alhamdulillah. Because we need to recognize that if it were not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willing for us to be here to worship Him, we would not have been able to come here to worship Him. And it is purely through the will and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have been given this opportunity to worship Him. So our worship of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala is beneficial for us and it does not increase or decrease Him in any state. So all of the good that we're doing, it's for ourselves. And this is very important for us to realize. Because there's a lot of things that enter into our lives that we forget. JazakAllah khair. <clears throat> MashaAllah, a lot of water. There's a lot of things that we have in our lives that we don't recognize their blessings until those blessings go away. And then when we lose those blessings and other people remind us of those blessings, then we begin to realize and we start to regret. And it's part of the, our human condition to regret. No matter how good we think we're doing, there's always going to be some form of regret in our hearts. So we need to maximize every moment that we have. And one of the greatest blessings that this community has been blessed with, this Pleasanton, Dublin, MCC community, and the Bay Area community, the California community, the United States of America. What we've been blessed with are our wonderful teachers. Our people like Imam Zaid Shakir and Sheikh Rami and Dr. Rania. We have been blessed with, in this community, we've been blessed with these teachers. And because this community is always so thriving and there's always something happening, Anytime you look at the MCC emails, it just takes 10 minutes to scroll to the bottom because there's so many activities going on. So this community is very blessed. But what happens with that blessing is oftentimes we lose sight of what a blessing it is. There are masajid in California, in the Bay Area, not even an hour away from here that are deprived of imams and scholars, that are deprived of teachers. And then so they reach out to students to come to help teach to give khutbahs, to give durus for their kids. But we have people, someone like Qari Amr teaching our kids Qur'an here. A master of the uh, of tajweed. There are so many blessings that we have in this community, we just need to remind ourselves of these blessings. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That reminder is beneficial for the believers, so remind one another. And he continues to remind us throughout the Qur'an the status of these great teachers. The status of the ulama. The status of the people who have the knowledge of Islam and of Allah in their hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares them. He, he, he says, يَرْفَعَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ That he's raised the ranks of the people who believe and the people who have knowledge. The people who believe and the people who have knowledge have been raised in the sights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But then Ibn Abbas comments and says that the people who have knowledge are over the people who believe by, uh, by seven levels. And between each of the two levels is the travel of a hundred years. Is the travel of a hundred years. So the people who believe, inshallah, that's all of us. And if we don't have that true yaqeen, we need to continuously remind ourselves and repeat, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. We continue to reaffirm the faith within our hearts until we gain the status of a mu'min. And then those who Allah chooses amongst us, He raises them to the level of the ulama. And for them is a higher status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies to this. He says, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa hu. Bear witness that there is no God other than Him. Malaika, And to His angels. And what? After Allah and His angels, who does He say subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa ulul ilm. Wa ulul ilm. The people of knowledge. So again, this community is very blessed. And when we look at the status of these scholars, not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is praising them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَن يُرِدِ اللَّهَ بِهِ خَيْرِ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Anyone who Allah wants good for that person, bless, Allah blesses them with the understanding of the religion. So those people who you see who are scholars, when you hear the names like Shaykh Rami or Imam Zaid or Dr. Rania, when you hear these names, because they have understanding of the religion, you know that Allah has already chosen them for good. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already has accepted from them something in their lives, that they are where they are now. And you know that there has been something that happened in their lives, some sort of struggle, some sort of sacrifice that led them to their being accepted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also says, Al-ulama wa rathatul anbiya That once the lineage of the prophets has ended, once the uh, messenger, messengership has been cut off with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now who's going to carry on the message of Islam? It's the ulama, the scholars. So our connection to these scholars is what our connection to an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is our connection to an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what these people do for us, it's very important. Number one is what? That they're connecting us to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We wouldn't know his teachings and we wouldn't know his practices and we wouldn't know what he brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it were not for the scholarship of 1400 of sacrifice of the scholars over these past 1440 years. These individuals have sacrificed their lives so that we can be sitting here in the masjid in California today. Imam Zaid during his talk on Isra wal Miraj said that this is the, the furthest that someone can go. This is, this is, a, masjid, this is a masjid al-Aqsa. This is a masjid al-Aqsa because this is the farthest mosque. This is the farthest someone can go. And then once you go past California, then the Qibla changes to the West. So this is the farthest that we can get to. So that Isra and Mi'raj that the Prophet ﷺ actualized, we have a portion of it here. We are at the furthest masjid, East. And every prayer is a Mi'raj to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anytime we come into a gathering like this, we are actualizing the, one of the greatest blessings given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is not any just like, oh yeah, it's Jummah time. This is a miracle. Everyone here is participating in a miracle. But we're just not realizing it because we've gotten so used to it. It's so common for us. If you look to our elders, Youth, look to the elders and ask them stories. Look to the elders and ask them stories. How many people did you used to have for Jummah? When, you know, when you first came over here, you know, we always hear the story. My dad's great at the story. I came from Pakistan, from a ship. I don't, I'm probably exaggerating now, but he probably snuck onto a ship or something. And then found his way to New York. Then somehow made his way to some other state. 
He's like, I did it all with $7 in my pocket. And then I'm sure all of you, all of the elders have similar stories. You're first coming to the uh, United States, and yeah, I only had $4 in my pocket, $7 in my pocket. And now you guys are establishing masajid like this. So go and ask them these stories. People used to pray in closets, barely getting three people for their Friday prayers. And now we have so many people here, mashaAllah. So this is a miracle that's taking place in front of our eyes. And all of it is due to who? Is due to our teachers who have sacrificed their lives to bring us here. So they, we need to honor and preserve their legacy. We need to honor and preserve their legacy. And the best way to do that for us, kids pay attention, the best way to do that for us is to be good students, to be good followers, to have good respect, proper respect with our teachers. And the relation of benefit that you gain from your teacher is in accordance to the amount of respect that you give that teacher. So if you hate chemistry and you're sitting in your chemistry class, you're just like, man, I can't get through this. This guy doesn't know how to teach me anything. He's just reading from the test book. This is the most boring class ever. Just let me go. Lunch is in 20 minutes. I can't take this anymore. That constant bashing of the teacher and bashing of the class is doing what? It's taking away from the benefit that you can gain from that class. Whereas when you're sitting in, I don't know, what do you guys enjoy? Like geometry. I don't know. Maybe you guys don't like geometry. Maybe you do like geometry. Just fill in the blank. The class that you like. Oh yeah, I love that class. Now you're sitting in that class. The teacher's always so much fun. He's making so many jokes. Right? In that class you're enjoying the teacher and you're enjoying the presence. That class you're going to gain from a lot more. When you look back, you're going to have learned a lot, more from, a lot more from that class than you would have from the class that you hated. And all of this just dependent on your attitude. Are you being a good student? Are you being a good follower? So in order to honor this legacy of our teachers, we need to shift this intention within us and say, how do I become a good student? And how do I become a good follower? And again, in that, in that you are recognizing the miracle that is taking place, that has been taking place since the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa muslimin fastaghfiruh innahu huwal ghafurur. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم I mentioned that these teachers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted something from them and so now it's our duty to be good followers and students of them to attend their classes consistently not just oh I have free time so I'm gonna go I don't have free time I'm not gonna go cherish these people that we have every week they're sacrificing themselves to come and teach us so every single week you see again that MCC email that so long but you have to go through it because you gotta know what's happening right you wanna know who's teaching this week make sure you're attending these programs and classes consistently number one and number two, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them because He has given them a portion of knowledge from this religion. So one thing that we can also do is that if we want to be accepted in the eyes of Allah, we need to make these teachers our role models and our guides. We can't just view them as, oh yeah, by the way, there's a class going on, let's just go. No, we need to take pride and we need to say, these are the people that I want to be like. These are the people that I'm going to model my life after. These are the people who are going to give our religion and our identities honor and dignity. So when someone comes and says that Islam oppresses women, we say, uh uh, we got Dr. Rania, what up? When someone says and says Islam has something against slavery, we say, you see Imam Zaid? What up? We say we don't have any barriers in our religion. We have living proofs in our communities. 
And then we go and we model our lives after them and we become the next Imam Zaid. And we make dua to Allah, oh Allah, make me the next Imam Zaid and make me better than him. And our sisters say, make me the next, next Dr. Rania and make me better than her. And allow them to be continuously increasing. And if we do this, if we say, I'm going to be the next Dr. Rania, the next Shaykh Rami, the Shaykh, next Shaykh Hamza, the next Imam Zaid, we give it our all and we give it our effort. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah accepts from us. Then all of that reward is going back to our teachers. All of that reward is going back to our parents. All of that reward is going back to these 1400 years of scholarship that have brought us to this point. And every single teacher in that line, in that lineage is being rewarded. And so imagine with the greatest of greats, if your name could also be included. So that on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, come forth, O ulama of Islam. And we're going to have Imam Ghazali standing there, and we're going to have Imam Abu Hanifa standing there, and we're going to have people like Imam Zaid and Dr. Rania standing there. One of you will also be standing in their midst. So have high aspirations for this. And hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us sincerity in seeking His pleasure. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sa'id al muslimin. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Udhkurullah yadhkurkum wa du'uhu yastajib lakum. Wa nadhikurullah ta'ala a'la wa awla wa akbar wa aqimu salam.